Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Is he worthy? Is he worthy of all glory and honor? Is there any that can compare to our God? There's nothing that compares to his love, to his goodness, to his mercy. There's nothing like his word. Amen. His word brings illumination and revelation. His word brings faith and grace into our lives. His word is what it's about. Are you a word person? You need to be people of the word of God. You need to know your word. You need to be living epistles, the Bible says. That when people look at you, you speak the word of God. Now, you don't have to speak King James. People will run from you. But you need to know the word. When people ask your opinion of stuff, you should be able to respond with the word. The Bible says we should have a word in season or out of season. In other words, whether you're ready or not. Amen? But I didn't pray this morning. Still, the word should be so much in you that it should just come out automatically. Amen? Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you that your word is spirit and life. We thank you that your word is eternal word. That you described your word as incorruptible seed. I thank you as that incorruptible seed is planted and engrafted upon our hearts and our mind. That Holy Spirit, you give us the insight. Give us the ears to discern and to perceive what you're saying. Give us the revelation of the word this morning. Let this word be the living word that you said it is to us. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you that your anointing is upon it. I thank you, Father, we're getting excited. We are receiving life, and we thank you for it. In the matchless name of Jesus, turn to your neighbor and say, I receive it. I receive the word. The Bible says we are to receive the word with, what's the word? Gladness. So are you glad this morning? Amen. Amen. So we've been teaching on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. We talked about the first set of gifts was the fivefold ministry gifts. You remember the fivefold ministry? It says in the Word of God that we are to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. We submit to the fivefold leadership. We submit ourselves under the hand of God because the hand represents the fivefold. We represent the action of God. We represent the government of God. We represent the kingdom of God. You do just as much as the fivefold does as well. But God has chosen the hand to be the thing that we as believers submit to. How many of you have ever met Christians that say, I don't go to church. I submit to no man. I'm a free moral agent. No You've been lied to. We have to submit ourselves under the hand of God. Why? So he could slap us? No. So he can raise us up. We all need to be raised up. I am raising my son. Even at this age, I keep telling him, no, keep your hand out of your mouth, keep your hand out of your mouth, keep your hand out of your mouth. (laughs) You know? He has to learn the obedience part yet. Right? But God wants to raise us, and the fivefold ministry is there to see that you get your full potential in Christ Jesus. Amen? Like I said, it is a gift that Jesus has given the body. Amen? Don't deny the gift Jesus gave you. Now we started talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So this is part four of the message called Appreciate the Gifts That God Gave You. And this morning, we're going to be talking about the word of wisdom. Why are we going to talk about the word of wisdom? Because it's the first one mentioned, right? In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, if you open up your Bible, if not, you could just listen. Verse 7 to 10, it says, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. You see, God gives us the gifts of the Spirit to profit each other. You might have the gift of tongues. You might have the gift of interpretation of tongues. You might have the gift of prophecy. And it is to benefit us all as a whole. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. Turn to your neighbor and say the word of wisdom. To another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another faith 
by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. So we see that each gift is manifested by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who manifests these gifts within us. And the gifts given by the Holy Spirit is upon the people he chooses to give them to. You might have the gift of miracles and I might have the gift of tongues and it's up to the Holy Spirit who he's given those gifts to. Some people have more than one gift. Amen? Amen. But guess what? We all have the ability to receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We receive the gifts of Jesus. Now we're receiving the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We also see that there are three groups of gifts. We got the revelation gifts, we have the power gifts, and we have the vocal gifts. Three sets of three equal how much? You didn't know there was going to be a quiz, huh? Three times three is nine. So there's nine gifts of the Spirit. You got three revelation gifts. The revelation gifts reveal something. The power gifts do something. And the inspirational or the vocal gifts say something. Amen? There are three revelation gifts. The gift of the word of wisdom, the gift of the word of knowledge, and the gift of the discerning of spirits. God uses these three gifts to reveal information supernaturally to his people. Amen? The gift of the word of knowledge has always been an interesting one. And when we were younger, when I was younger anyway, we were all younger. When we first started going to the church, my whole family got saved. And it would get scary at times because the pastor would move with that. And he would reveal some information about people. He would read people's mail. Not bad stuff. You know? Like people's addresses. There's somebody here that lives on Berkeley Street. And your address is 1372. Who is that person? And that person would stand up and, you know, it wouldn't be for show. Ha ha, I said that. No, that person would come up and most of the times get a miracle. Amen. So it was a little scary at times because I would often think, is, oh man, he's going to rat me out. <laughs> he knows what's going on. This guy knows my business. And in some cases, that is true. But we're not talking about that one this morning. And they all said, hallelujah. So these gifts, these revelation gifts, they reveal supernatural information to his people. This information comes from outside the bounds of the person's natural process. So it's not like a person with this gift will see you with red sh bloodshot eyes and tissues up to your nose and you're coughing and the person goes, oh, the Lord just told me you have a cold. It is stuff that is not obviously, it's not discerned with the seeing of the eyes and the natural, and it's not discerned with the hearing of the ears, which means someone didn't come up and say, hey, so-and-so, it comes directly from the Spirit of God. How many of you would like that gift? Let's find out what it is before you like it. Right? Hallelujah. The gift of the word of wisdom is a supernatural revelation of the divine purposes of God. It is a message from God to his church given by the Holy Spirit through the believer. Now listen, the Holy Spirit brings a portion, say a portion, a part, a portion of God's wisdom that has to do with something that is unborn or in the future. So God will not bring a word of wisdom about your past. The word of wisdom will not come about your past. A word of wisdom is to accomplish something in your life. Amen? We're going to talk about some examples in a minute, all right? He's revealing something that has not yet come to pass. So the word of wisdom might be, you know, the Lord is showing me that if you're diligent, in your studies, 
that God is going to open up a door in the area of you being an architect. Just making this stuff up, okay? All right? And you're still in junior high school. I don't know. You see, it's about something in the future. Or I perceive that God is going to use you to touch many people in Malaysia. You understand? Something to happen. Most prophets, or I should say every prophet, is supposed to have this gift. And all the prophets said, what? Amen? Every prophet is to possess this, if, this gift. This gift unveils, in part, God's divine purposes on earth. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, in verse 7, it says, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. Amen? The word of wisdom speaks hidden things, things we would not normally or even naturally know. Praise God. Isn't the Holy Spirit wonderful? Amen. When a person receives this gift, he does not suddenly become a know-it-all. Turn to your neighbor and say, stop being a know-it-all. I found something about know-it-alls. They tend to know nothing at all. It's funny how that works, huh? It's called wise in their own head. God only reveals a part of his wisdom. So when God speaks the word of wisdom, God doesn't lay out the entire seven-step plan or 14-step plan. He reveals it only in part. It's up to the believer now to seek after God to find out how that part will manifest. Amen? Because if there's a message spoken, there needs to be someone to receive it. One amen. Hallelujah. Kirk, I'll give you a dollar later. Hallelujah. Hmm. The Holy Spirit will give this gift to anyone, no matter how much academic brilliance they have. So it's pretty interesting that God could give someone that doesn't have any wisdom in the natural the gift of wisdom. A person that can't put two words together to make sense, God can give the gift of wisdom. Pretty interesting, which proves it's God. I can't do that. You know, it's like Rocky Balboa explaining the theory of relativity. <laughs> you know? Hallelujah. Realize this, that if the body of Christ moved in the revelation gifts like they're supposed to, if the body of Christ moved in the revelation gifts like they're supposed to, there would be no need for the devil's counterfeits. There would be no fortune tellers. There'd be no psychics. There would be no other occult involvement. If the children of God would just desire these gifts and move in these gifts, we could put the devil out of business. Amen? There's a lot of people searching for answers. Amen? Did you read in the paper about this couple in Brooklyn that was stabbed to death last week? You know? Turns out they were involved in voodoo rituals and the person killed them because the voodoo ritual didn't do what it was supposed to do. So he came back and killed them. Imagine if these people moved with the word of wisdom. The word of wisdom would have profited this individual greatly and nobody would have died. Amen? Right now this country is under attack by the greatest wave of new age that there's ever been in modern times. Black magic, white magic, witchcraft, like we've never known. Christianity is under attack, right? They are trying to push Christianity out, amen? Your government had tried to push Christianity out. The school system has tried to push Christianity out, but yet it's okay to do yoga and meditation in the public schools now. It's okay to teach the, the first and second graders to sit there and go, 
opening themselves to all kinds of demonic activity. They think they have problem with hyperactive attention disorder. <laughs> Let the kids do this. What are they going to do when they start levitating around the classrooms? <laughs> they don't know what they're doing. They're blind. They're blind. They're blinded from knowing truth. But yet there's something you know, inherent in the, in the nature of mankind spiritually that just hates Christianity, but yet will open and embrace Buddhism. And there's so many false teachers out there. You know, you know Facebook is very telling. It, 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 it kind of saddens me at times how I see Christians sharing videos and quotes from people like uh, Dr. Dwyer who blends the Bible with Buddhism and they think it's perfectly okay. Well, he died last year or two years ago, so he won't be making any more videos. You know, but just church. Know what you're doing. Amen. One reason for this, why Christianity is being pushed out, is that the church has not taken its rightful place in its spiritual warfare. We have not used the weapons of this warfare which are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. We haven't been people of prayer. We haven't been very spiritual. I'm not just talking about you. I'm talking about the modern church. We haven't been very spiritual. We've been bless me, bless me, bless me, grace, 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 don't tell me what to do. And we've become very weak. But thank God for revival. Because as the gifts start to flow, you will be revived and you will be a powerhouse in the kingdom of God. Amen. If you want it. This gospel is to whoever wants and to whoever wills. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we need all nine gifts of the Spirit in operation. We need all nine gifts of the Spirit so we can win the war and possess the land. We need all nine gifts of Spirit operating in this house. We need all nine gifts. You know what? If you really think about it, nine is not a lot. It's not an unreachable number. It's nine gifts. Some of you got more gifts for your birthday than nine. If you got $10 for your birthday, you got more. Amen? Amen? You got one buck more than nine gifts. But the nine gifts are much more valuable. And they're much more precious. And they have to be much more desired. Do you desire the gifts? Amen. Who desires the gifts? Say, gimme, gimme, gimme. Amen. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 says that we are to covet earnestly the best gifts so in this case it's okay to be greedy it is okay to be greedy for the things of God it is okay to be zealous and passionate about the gifts because he wants you to receive the gifts Amen. he wants us as a body to receive everything he has for us have you ever tried to give someone a gift and they reject it No? You never tried to, how do you feel? Probably rejected. <laughs> well, duh, how do you think I feel? I get to keep it use of myself. We should covet earnestly the best gifts. The passion says it this way, but you should all constantly boil over with passion in seeking the higher gifts. We should be boiling over with passion to seek the gifts that God has for you. Amen? Instead of seeking just the blessings, instead of seeking just your rent, instead of seeking just a boyfriend slash girlfriend, instead of seeking a better job, seek the gifts. God's more concerned about your power over your possessions. Didn't say he didn't care about your possessions. He's more concerned about your power. Because what's the point of having possessions if you're powerless? What's the point of having a new house if you're defeated? 
What's the point of driving a Mercedes if you don't have shoes? The Amplified Bible says, but earnestly desire and zealously cultivate the greatest and the best gifts and graces, the highest gifts and the choicest graces. I challenge you this morning to desire the gifts that God has. Maybe God has the gift of wisdom for you. Maybe the God has the gift of working of miracles. That's the one everyone wants. I want to do the working of miracles. Why? So people can say, look at the miracle worker. Or so people can say, look at Jesus. Ah, yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Some of the best and most effective evangelism is when you lay hands on a sinner in the street and they get their miracle in the street, you with the gift of the working of miracles. And they say, how did you do that? And you just say, Jesus. Now you've got to ask him in. And you know how many people will say no? Probably none. And the ones that say no, they, they need to get healed of confusion. Amen? Just like my mom with the Buddhist monk. Did you lead him to the Lord, that Buddhist guy? Right? He accepted Jesus after God healed his back in China. Right? For you watching on Ustream, when Pastor Teresa went to China on a missionary trip, she met a Buddhist monk. He was the head of the, the Buddhas. And he was in pain. And Pastor Teresa asked him to ask Buddha to heal his back. And he did, and Buddha didn't. And then he sa she said, I'm going to ask Jesus to heal you. And Jesus healed him instantly. And he said, Jesus is Lord. And he invited Jesus in his heart. Amen? That's because Pastor Teresa is such a special person. No, same Holy Spirit, same blood of Jesus. Same Holy Spirit, same blood of Jesus. It comes down to being spiritual-minded versus carnal-minded, being faith-filled or fear-filled. Or nougat-filled. What are you, a Milky Way? Nougat. What is nougat anyway? Someone look that up. What is nougat? So I want to challenge you guys to seek these gifts. Seek them with all your heart. God says if you seek with all your heart, you will find them. If you seek with all your heart, you will find them. If you seek the Holy Spirit with all your heart, you will find him. Amen? God has always worked through the gifts of the Spirit. Some people think that the moving of the gifts of the Spirit is just a New Testament thing, and it is a New Testament thing, but God always moved through his Spirit, even in the Old Testament. Want to see some examples? I don't believe you, Pastor Vin. Prove it. Genesis chapter 6, verse 12 and 13. When you're there, say I'm there. Genesis is the first book. comes right after the table of contents. It's okay to cheat. If you're new with the Bible, it's okay to look at the table of contents. That's why God put it there. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 12 and 13... It says, so God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt. Hey, have you looked upon the earth? Indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Right? You know the rest of the story, right? God told Noah that he has to build an ark because he's sending rain. God told Noah that he's going to send rain. Up until that time in biblical history, there is no indication that it had ever rained before. I am going to send something you've never seen before. I am going to send something you've never heard of before. Well, Pastor Vin, if it never rained, how did the earth, how did all the plants survive? Well, the Bible says that the earth used to water itself. God did not reveal to Noah everything, just the word, almost a blurb. But now Noah knew for 120 years what God was going to do because of that word. And he built an ark. And everybody said, Noah, you crazy. You're telling me that it, water is going to start falling from the sky for 40 days? And we're all going to drown? You, you, you Christians are crazy. You know, Jesus is coming back? What are you, nuts? 
They've been saying that since I'm a kid. He hasn't come back. He ain't coming back. You guys will believe in a fairy tale. Noah, you're believing a fairy tale. Well, you know what? Just like in the days of Noah, they were partying and they were drinking. And then suddenly it started to rain. And you know what happened? All the naysayers, Noah, open the door! Noah, you are... Because once the door was shut, listen, they missed the boat. They missed the boat. And just like Jesus, the rapture of the church, there's many who go miss the boat. The good old gospel ship. You know, you don't think they did that? They probably said it in Hebrew. As that boat was floating up, you don't think they were, no, you don't think, absolutely. <laughs> Amen? And Jesus is coming soon, and he's coming for those that are looking for the boat. He's only coming for those who have their ticket to get on the boat. And that ticket is called blood of Jesus and righteous living. Amen. Not just blood of Jesus alone. Blood of Jesus, God's grace, righteous living. Without spot, without blemish. Amen. How about Daniel? God gave Daniel great visions. He saw empires leap into existence and before they were even born. He names the very nature of each one of these empires. The gift of the word of wisdom made this possible for Daniel to know this. How about Ezekiel? In the book of Ezekiel, chapters 38 to 39, we see how God revealed the future to his prophet. We have been seeing these very chapters unfold before our very eyes. These chapters tell how Israel will be attacked by a nation from the north in these end times. Yesterday morning, for those that don't know, you know, there's a war going on in Syria. There's a civil war going on in Syria. And Russia is there fighting, and Iran is there fighting in Syria right now. And Iran sent one of their drones into Israel. So Israel took immediate action and blew that thing up. And then sent their fighter jets to take out the, the stations that control their drones. So they will never invade their space. In the process, one of their jets got shot down. So Israel retaliated with the greatest military response they have in 30 years and wiped out like nine or 12 different strongholds of Iran. Okay? Unfolding before our eyes. Prophecy fulfilled. David. How many know David? Who was David? King of David. Right? Who was his father? David revealed through the Psalms how the Messiah would come and how he would die. It was a revelation of the future found in Psalms chapter 2 and Psalms chapter 22. David also received the word of wisdom on how to fight his battles. And David wasn't perfect, but he had a heart after God, right? right? And he became the greatest king of Israel next to Jesus whoever lived, even with his character flaws. So if you're waiting to be perfect, to be used by God, you don't have to be perfect. You just have to be getting better. You have to be growing. You have to be perfecting. How about King Solomon? Sing, Col Sing Solomon? King Solomon handled the two mothers in conflict over a child with the word of wisdom. Right? Oh, you want them? You want them? Eh, let's just cut them in half. You each take half. No, no, no. The, the, the one who stuck, was wanted to steal the baby said, yeah, good idea, cut them in half. But the mother said, no, you can have them. Because a mother's love is real. See, that's wisdom. Joel. In Joel 2, 28, he revealed that in the last day, 
God would pour out his spirit upon all flesh. He was revealing the future. In Isaiah, one of the best examples of the word of wisdom being brought forth is Isaiah 53. Some of you need to know this. Most of you know it. He described the nature of the Messiah. He described what kind of a person he would be, the way he would die, and what his death would mean to us. Isaiah 53. He even wrote that by his stripes we, we are healed. What makes this amazing is that in the days of Isaiah, whipping was not a form of punishment. So he's describing something that didn't even exist yet. It's just like when the prophets, talk, prophets in, the, in Ezekiel talk about the end times and they're describing how these locusts flew over the land, right? They didn't understand what it was. Helicopters look like, sound like locusts. Right? Amen? How about some New Testament examples? Jesus' ministry was an example of all the gifts. He had all nine gifts in operation. Read the Gospels and you'll find all the examples there. One of them was Jesus received the word of wisdom on how to deal with the accuser of the woman caught in adultery. Through the word of wisdom, he even spoke of his own death and resurrection. James received the word of wisdom on how to resolve a church conflict that threatened to divide the church. Peter received the word of wisdom on how to deal with dishonesty. Amen? So we see the gifts were always in operation. In Acts chapter 11, if you want, turn. Are you learning something this morning? How many of you desire the gift of the word of wisdom? After I go through all nine gifts, I'm going to teach and speak how to receive those gifts. In the meantime, the gifts, you should desire all nine. Start desiring them. Start thanking God for the gifts. Say, Lord, I receive your gifts. Holy Spirit, I receive your gifts, okay? And get yourself prepared. In, in Acts chapter 11, 27 to 30, verse, verses 27 to 30 in the Passion, it mentions a prophet named Agabus. Anyone know Agabus? Nice name. That wasn't one of our choices for our son. <laughs> he said, you're welcome. At that time, there were prophets in the church of Jerusalem, and some of them came to Antioch. One of them was named Agabus. He stood up in one of the meetings and prophesied by the Holy Spirit that a severe famine was about to come over Israel. Now I said prophesy, right? Just keep this in mind. The prophecy was fulfilled during the reign of Claudius Caesar. So they determined that each believer, according to his or her ability, would give an offering to send as relief to the brothers living in Judea. They set aside the gifts and entrusted the funds to Barnabas and Saul to take to the elders of the church in Jerusalem. So here we see Agabus warned of coming disaster that caused the brethren to spring to action. You see, when the gifts of the Spirit come to a corporate body, it's not just for people to go, wow, pretty amazing. <laughs> it will cause us to spring into action to meet whatever the word talks. Just like someone who prophesies over your life, you don't just say, oh well. You actually have to pray on this and work towards that word to accomplish it or to put yourself in a place for God to continue working in you for it to manifest. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. How the gift of the word of wisdom is manifest. It manifests itself in different ways, the word of wisdom. To Joseph, it came through dreams and interpretation of dreams. Joseph moved with the gift of the word of wisdom. So much that God promoted him. Daniel through visions. Ezekiel was caught away in the spirit. John the apostle was caught up in the spirit and the entire book of Revelation was flashed before his eyes. He actually 
had a vision of the entire book and wrote the vision down. Amen? Paul, he was brought up to the third heaven. And Jesus appeared to him at least three times. What does it mean, the third heaven? Oh, there's three different heavens? It's like the Mormons. We all get different. No, 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 no. You got the heaven where we're breathing the air right now, <laughs> the atmosphere. The second heaven is the spiritual realm where the angels and the demons are fighting all around us, but you might not be able to see that. And the third heaven is where the throne of God is. He went up to the throne. Amen? Coming to the close here. Come on, fingers. Now, some of you may be confused because I used the word prophecy in that verse, right? But it's not the gift of prophecy because it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 3, that the gift of prophecy is for edification, exhortation, and comfort. The word of wisdom tells of things to come. Prophecy builds you up and comforts you as individuals. Okay? Someone can get up and what may appear to be they're prophesying in the church service, but they're actually using a word of wisdom. Okay? If it's talking about something to come, something to happen, that's why prophets should have this gift, talking about things to come, things to happen, it's the word of wisdom. If it's talking about, I love you with an everlasting love, for you, you know, whatever. It, it's bringing you from here to here. You feel good about yourself. We feel good about a body. We, we know that we can accomplish great things through God's grace and power. Yay, yay, we win, rah, rah. But it's not wisdom, okay? The word of wisdom is the first one listed. We need wisdom from the Holy Spirit. I think it's important many times when we look at the way God lists things in scriptures, not saying every single instance, but a lot of times there is an importance to it. Just like the fivefold ministry starts off with the apostle and the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the lowly teacher. Wisdom is the principal thing. Amen? We need wisdom from the Holy Spirit to know how to carry out what God has revealed to us. The word of wisdom reveals to us how to do something God has shown you to do. When you don't know what to do, we ask for wisdom. Many times God will just supernaturally drop the wisdom in you and sometimes you'll receive a word of wisdom whether to yourself or by the voice of somebody else. The word of wisdom will reveal how to resolve situations. It'll also reveal how to pray for people how to avoid danger, how to speak the right words into situations. Amen? You know, people who lack wisdom, they just run their mouth all the time. They cause all kind of havoc. Can anyone say I'm gu amen? I'm guilty. I've been redeemed, not guilty no more. You know, here's some practical points about the gift of wisdom. Don't be impulsive in making decisions or giving advice. Just because you've asked for the gift of the word of wisdom and maybe you've moved in the gift of the word of wisdom doesn't mean you become people's personal counselors. Don't be quick to give a word of wisdom. Pray on it. Make sure it's God and not just a good idea. Make sure it's truly coming from God and you didn't put the, the puzzle together in your own mind. Okay? Don't act under pressure of people or circumstances. <gasps> Can you give me a word of wisdom? I don't know. Tell me what to do. I'll tell you what to do. Go pray. My Holy Spirit is your Holy Spirit too, Jack. Or Jill. Ask the Holy Spirit for insight, for a word of wisdom and what to do. It may come as a spontaneous picture, an impression, or a flow of thought. You may even see a picture of how an event will unfold in the future, like John the Revelator. This gives you confidence as to what steps you should take. And most importantly, be prepared to wait on the Lord for wisdom. Amen? Did you receive? 
How many of you desire the gift of the word of wisdom? Put your hands up if you desire that gift. Like Pastor Anthony would say, Lord, take that picture. Good. So, Lord, I just thank you now, even for this word this morning. I thank you, Lord Jesus. You've been made wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption for us. I thank you that your word is wisdom, and you are wisdom, and that those that raise their hand, oh God, Lord, they raise their hand, but give them now the passion and the zeal to seek out that gift. If they desire it, Lord, give it to them. Lord, concerning the Holy Spirit, you said if they ask you, you would not hold back. So, Lord, even as we've received the baptism of the Spirit, Lord, give them that gift of the word of wisdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. You coming back next week? Amen. We got eight more gifts to go. Will that be eight more messages? Maybe. Maybe six, maybe four, maybe 15. I don't know yet, but we'll see. Amen? Can you give the Lord a praise this morning? Hallelujah. Thank God. Whenever the word is ministered, signs follow. The word says whenever the word is ministered, signs follow. Signs follow those who believe. Do you believe? If you look behind you, you should see a bunch of signs which prove you're a believer. If you look behind you and you see moths, what are you believing? If there's no signs following you, what are you believing? You have the way maker in you. You have the miracle worker in you. Is it cold back here? I see a lot of people doing this. Why don't you tell me? I can put the heat on. Not that the message is over.